Hey, good to have you here. I'm going to share with you a huge solution to the sculpting and retopology workflow in Blender. To understand how the solution will help, let me first explain the basics of the workflow. This workflow allows an artist the freedom to create and sculpt without limitation, and transition the resulting high poly mesh to an optimized low poly mesh for use in animation and rendering. The problem here is that the high poly mesh generated from the sculpt is too dense for most current computers to handle comfortably. The sheer amount of calculations alone will have your computer crawling. The solution I have will keep the number of polygons on your mesh low, and also preserve that detail as close as possible to your original sculpt. Now I'm going to demonstrate this using this cool antler model, and I'll give you a few tips and tricks along the way. Now I had started a retopology process previously, but if you see here, it's not perfect. Now the base doesn't look horrible, but you can see that there's some imperfections. There's lines, there's weird creases where I don't want them, and when we go into edit mode, you can see that the topology is fairly clean, but still we're running into some errors. Now this might be because I used n-gons, and this isn't good for topology at all. Idiot! But if you see, let's try fixing this. So let's select these vertices, delete just the faces, fill it in with quads, tab back into object mode, and you can see that we still have a weird crease that happens. And I know it's a little difficult to see, but it's still not perfect. So let me show you a better way to do this. So check this out. Blender has this amazing modifier called the multi-res modifier. Now how this works is it has multiple levels of subdivision, and going up in subdivision allows for our high poly mesh to be visible. And going down in the levels, brings us back to our low poly mesh for animating and rendering. This modifier is key for keeping the polygon count low and also preserving the detail. And here we can take advantage of this when going into animation. So let's set up our retopology. Let's go ahead and add a plane and let's bring our plane close to the surface. Now I'm going to turn on snapping and we'll select face. Now let's add a modifier to the plane, add a shrink wrap, select the target to be the antler. And now you can see that our plane is starting to snap to the object. Now I'm going to select the wrap method to be reject and enable negative. This will allow it to show up correctly. So now we'll move our plane onto the antler and you'll see that our antler is clipping through the plane. To fix this, let's go to the object tab and in view port display we'll enable in front. And to make this appear a little cleaner, I'm just going to go up here and enable back face culling. And this will make it so that when we're looking at the mesh from the backside, it'll be transparent. This will also tell you which way the normals are facing. Now for my retopology, I'm going to delete this plane and I'm using a plugin called Petic. You can find Petic on the Blender market. It's very inexpensive and it's a quad patch maker. So let's make a basic patch here. So we'll left click to create vertices and I'm going to create a square and you can see we can move these vertices around using the left click and if we want to add or subtract vertices we can use the scroll wheel on our control points here and Petic's pretty powerful here. If we click A it will try to find an alternate solution to fill the zones with different flows of geometry. And sometimes Petic might find alternate patterns for your geometry flow. And to do this, you just hit Shift A. Once I'm happy with this, I'll press space. This will confirm the patch. Now let's create another one, move the anchors around, make sure the control points are bending the way I want, and space to confirm. And this is the first time I'm using this plugin. There might be a few things that I'm missing, but so far I'm happy with the plugin. So I'm just going to continue going around here using Petic to fill in patches. And I'm not worrying at all about the bumps right now. Details like that we're going to fill in later. What I want to focus on is how our geometry is flowing. Now this process is pretty lengthy. I'm going to skip a lot of the retopology. If you'd like me to do an in-depth tutorial on how to create the best retopology, just let me know in the comments below. There's just so much I can't really cover in one video. Okay, now I've completed the retopology, the flow of the geometry as I want it. But you see we're now missing a lot of the details of our original sculpt. So now let's get all those details back. We'll add a subdivision surface. We'll drag it up so it's before the shrink wrap. What this will do is it will create extra geometry before the shrink wrap and then the shrink wrap will take all that extra geometry and form it around the sculpt. Now for the fun part. Now for each level that we want to add to our multi-res modifier later, we're going to need to apply the subdivision surface and the shrink wrap. So we're going to do our first layer here. I'm going to shift D to duplicate the subdivision surface and shift D to duplicate the shrink wrap and then I'm going to hit control A to apply the subdivision surface. Make sure you're applying the subdivision surface first and then the shrink wrap. Now for the second layer we're going to do this again. Shift D to duplicate the subdivision and Shift D to duplicate the shrink wrap and then control A to apply the subdivision and control A to apply the shrink wrap. Now we're going to continue this five times. Five to six levels will give you plenty of detail. And a 
in most cases, four layers might be enough. And now you start to see that all of our detail is starting to come back onto our retopology. But if you see, it's also added quite a lot of geometry. In fact, there's even more vertices now than there was on the sculpt. But doing it this way, make sure that we get all of the detail from our original sculpt and that we're not missing anything. Here's a closer comparison of just how close the retopology is with the original. And it's looking pretty dang good. Okay, so now that we've applied multiple layers of subdivision and shrink wrap modifiers, now let's add the multi-res modifier. On the multi-res modifier, now we're going to hit unsubdivide. And you'll want to hit this as many times as you created layers. So for instance, if you applied subdivision surface and shrink wrap five times, you'll want to hit unsubdivide five times. And what this will do is it will unsubdivide all the way down to our base retopology, that original retopology we created. And now we have both. At level zero, we have our original retopology. And at level five, we have our detailed high geometry, high resolution mesh. Now in this sculpt, it's not perfect. There's a lot of lines and there's a lot of imperfections. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to go into sculpt mode, hit smooth, and now for the magic. This is my favorite part of this. The amount of geometry is high enough that we don't lose any of the details when we're smoothing. Or if we do, it's, it's so very minimal that it doesn't really matter. And in this process, it will usually look a lot better than your sculpt anyway, because now you have really smooth surfaces. Just look how smooth it all starts to become. that's it. Now we have a retopology that has high detail and the capability to go to our low poly model for animations. Let me know if there's anything I missed, if this has helped you at all, and I hope you can create something wonderful. Until next time.